Hey, what is up guys, it's Arnik and welcome to this week's video. It is so nice of you to join me again today. Catching up on last week's video, today we are going to take a look at how to set up the automatic adjustments of the colors in your color palette. This is gonna be a somewhat tacky one and we have to dive into some of the background knowledge of... Come on. Where were they? We have to dive into some of the background knowledge of how the HSL color spectrum really works. But don't you worry, I'm going to make this as easy and understandable as possible. Well, at least I try. <laughs> but before we hop into After Effects, make sure you're subscribed and turn on the notifications to step by step up your filmmaking and animation game with every video. So, without any further ado, let's hop right in. Roll the intro! I think this concept is best to show on a really simple example. What you see here is a basic color palette which I have put together. These kind of color palettes are used in design processes to make sure you always use the correct colors and shades and don't accidentally pick a color that's slightly off. What I did in this example is that I only set the first color specifically and the other three changed depending on that first color. So far so identical with my previous video, right? But today we are going to dive into it and learn how this process actually works. So let's reset all of this and start over again. Just a short notice in advance though. Of course you don't have to write the expression the same way I do, but it does help a lot in terms of clarity and overall traceability. So with that out of the way, let's get started. First things first, we set the very base construct of our expression. In the beginning, we simply define a variable, for example C. You can name it whatever you want, but I like to keep it short and simple. Of course, color would be fine as well. Just try to pick something you can identify later on as well. So after the C, type equals, and now pick with the base color and end the line with a semicolon. Go into the next line and call up your freshly created variable by simply entering its name again. So again, C equals, and now RGB to HSL. It's really important to stick with camel case. So RGB is small, then capital T, O, capital H, S and L. Followed by open brackets, entering C, close the brackets and another semicolon. RGB to HSL is a pre-installed function of After Effects and it turns, as the name suggests, the initial RGB value the color picker gives us into HSL values. Once we have that, we set the final output of our expression by typing HSL to RGB with open brackets, C, closing brackets and semicolon. Now that is kind of confusing, right? Especially if you consider when entering this expression, nothing changes at all. So why doing all of this in the first place? Well, here's the thing. We want our colors to change depending on the base color. When we deal with RGB color values, it is really hard to pinpoint how to adjust these colors and values to stay within the same look of the colors. With HSL, however, we have the perfect control over the hue, saturation and luminance separately, which is fairly important to make automated color adjustments. And for that reason, we switch between the color spaces. For the next part, let's look into how we can actually manipulate the values to get to our desired result. To do so, we first have to understand how the HSL color space works. HSL stands for Hue, Saturation and Luminance. The hue is given in degrees ranging from 0 to 360, with each degree representing a slightly different color tone. Then there is the saturation, given in percent, 0 to 100, and luminance also in percent, 0 to 100. So, changing the hue by 90 degrees, for example, will change the color tone from pure red to a vibrant green. Saturation and luminance are not affected by those changes at all. The same way we can increase or decrease the luminance or saturation separately as well. So now that we know how this color spectrum works, we can start to think about how this correlates to those values inside of After Effects expressions. After switching the RGB to HSL, we receive a series of values. The set of these values are called an array. 
Despite what you might expect, this array contains four different values. Hue, saturation, luminance, and alpha, which you might know as the opacity value. In the expression language, we can access these different numbers via iterations. The iteration index of arrays start at zero. So the first value, the hue, would be accessible with the iteration index of zero. Respectively, saturation is represented by the index of 1, luminance by 2, and alpha would be 3. These iterations can be called up by putting them into square brackets. So with that in mind, let's go back into After Effects. Now, inside your already written expression, after you turn the colors into HSL, type the following. First, your color variable, C in our case, followed by squared brackets, and put the iteration index of the hue value inside. You remember what it is? Hue, saturation, luminance. So the first value, iteration start at zero, so zero, right? And that should equal this exact value, and we add a value of 0.5. Now, you probably wonder why there is a value of 0.5, right? Before, I told you that hue is given in degrees from 0 to 360. While that is true for the actual numbers, it is different within the expressions. Here the values only range from 0 to 1. 0 being 0 degrees and 1 being 360 degrees. Which means that a value of 0.5 represents a hue alteration of 180 degrees, which brings us right onto the other side of the color wheel and thus the complementary to our base color. And the great thing is, even if you exceed the 360 degrees limit, the color wheel is infinite and just continues to move across. And that's where it's different to saturation and luminance. These as well are given in a range from 0 to 1 within the expressions. But once you have reached the maximum luminance of 100% or 1 in the expressions, there is no way to make it brighter than 100% brightness. However, if we then reduce the saturation as well, we get you the brighter colors. 100% luminance and 0% saturation after all results in pure white. Thankfully, After Effects already keeps that in mind for us. So we can copy the same expression of our hue adjustments for another of our color segments in the palette. Only change the iteration index from 0, hue, to 2, luminance. Even if we get across the maximum amount of luminance of 1, After Effects automatically adjusts the saturation to meet the given requirements. But we don't want to have it that bright, so let's reduce the addition to somewhere around 0.1 or 0.2. I feel like these slight adjustments result in the best relations of colors. Obviously you could also subtract from the luminance, which would result in darker color. To finalize your color palette, all you gotta do is to copy the last expression, paste it into the remaining color picker, highlight the chosen color in the first line, and pick with the hue altered color. Because you also want a brighter version of that one for all palette. And there you have it, all set up. Yeah, and I wanted to include that on a side note in my last video. I'm sure that would have worked great. But seriously though, what are your thoughts on this one? Interesting concept to get into the more techy stuff in motion design. Good thing is this concept is also applicable to overall colorization of future products of yours. So it's not a one-off After Effects input you had today. So let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Also check out my previous video to see how setups like these can be very pen beneficial. <laughs> can be very beneficial in your animation workflow. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!